Hey Algebra students, how you doing? Time for another video. This video is going to be on complex numbers. Now, you may be wondering, what's that? Okay, a really complicated number? Uh, no, not really. A complex number is a very specific type of number, but it's not necessarily all that complicated. But uh, you do have to expand your idea of what a number is. So let me give you some examples that you're already familiar with. Uh, when you're a little kid, what numbers mean are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc., okay? And then you kind of, you, you hear about zero. If I don't have any, that means I have zero this. Okay, well, that sort of makes sense. And then you learn that you can, uh, well, somebody tells you when you're learning about division, you, you, somebody says, well, what's 5 divided by 2? And you go, oh, you can't do that. You can't divide 5 by 2. But then later, somebody says, well, what if you could? Oh, well, then... Uh, I guess that would be two and a half. And you come up with this new system, and that is rational numbers. And then later on, somebody says, well, what's, what's uh, uh, two minus five? And you say, oh, two minus five? No, no, no. I can't do that because five is bigger than two. And then somebody says, well, what if you could? What if you could do that? Oh, okay, well then, I guess it would be like three below zero. It would be negative three. And then you come up with that, with that idea of what a number is. So now we have fractions. Now we have negative numbers. Basically, we have all the rational numbers. And, uh, and then you learn about square roots, and you say, well, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 25 is 5. And somebody says, well, what's the square root of, uh, of uh, 2? And you say, oh, you can't do that. Okay, can't take the square root of 2. There's no number that I can think of that if you multiply times itself, it equals 2. And somebody says, but what if there were? What if there were such a number? And you go, oh, okay. Well, uh, then we'll call it the square root of 2. And then you find out, wow, there's no rational number that equals that number. So now we have to come up with this new class of numbers called irrational numbers. And that's where we are right now, okay? Because the rational numbers and the irrational numbers make up the real numbers. And that's all the numbers we've been dealing with so far, okay? But stick with the square root idea. Because there's another type of number that we always say, nope, can't take the square root of that. And that is negative numbers. Okay? If somebody says, what's the, what's the square root of negative 1? You'd say, nope, can't do that. A negative number times a negative number is positive. A positive number times a positive number is positive. Anytime you multiply a number by itself, it's always positive. Well, guess what the next question is? But what if you could do it? What if you could do that? Well, now we have to come up with a new kind of number. And that number is an imaginary number, okay? I is the imaginary unit. It is the square root of negative 1, okay? And since it's the square root of negative 1, that means I squared is negative 1. Complex numbers are simply numbers that have a real component and an imaginary component. What that means is it, anytime we write a complex number, we're going to be writing it something plus something else, or perhaps something minus something else. The first something is going to be the real part, and the second, the second something is going to be the imaginary part, okay? I know this seems kind of weird right now, but just stick with me for a little bit, okay? Now, one of the first things that we should do when we're talking about uh, complex numbers is uh, figure out, like, <clears throat> um, well, I guess one of the first things you do with numbers, period, is you add them, right? And then you subtract them, and then you multiply them, and you divide them. So let's figure out how to do that, all right? So let's take, uh, let's take three complex numbers. We'll take a, which is, I'm going to call that negative 3 plus 2i. There's my real part. There's my imaginary part. b is going to be uh, 2 minus 5i. There's my real part. There's my imaginary part. And c is going to be... 11 minus 13i, okay? So uh, let's see what happens when we add some of these uh, 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 complex numbers. Well, if I take a plus b, if I take this number plus this number, how would I add those? Well, you do it the way you would imagine that you do it. That is, you add up your real part, negative 3 plus 2, that gets you negative 1. And you add up your imaginary part, positive 2 plus negative 5, which is negative 3i. And there's your answer, okay? So negative 3 plus 2i plus 2 minus 5i gets you 
negative 1 minus 3i. It's kind of like combining uh, like terms. Okay, it's that simple. Okay, so uh, let's see. Now let's try. Uh, now let's try a minus c and see what we get there. Okay, well let's see. Negative 3. Basically, we do it the exact same way. Here's a. Here's c. Negative 3 minus 11 is going to get us negative 14. And 2 minus negative 13 is like saying 2 plus 13. That's 15i. Uh, so there's our answer. a minus c is going to be negative 14 plus 15i. It's all very straightforward, isn't it? Okay? Now let's look at what happens when we multiply our uh, complex numbers. Okay, now multiplying complex numbers is a little bit, uh, well, it's not tricky, but it's not nearly as straightforward as this. Okay, when we multiply, let's say we're going to multiply A times B. Okay, all right, well that's going to be negative 3 plus 2i times 2 minus 5i. Okay, well, um, shoot, that just looks like a couple of binomials, doesn't it? Well, how do you multiply binomials? I usually use that uh, old acronym FOIL, first, outside, inside, last. Let's do that. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 5i is plus 15i. 2i times 2 is plus 4i. And 2i times negative 5i is negative 10i squared. Now we got to think about this a little bit, all right? This part is easy, okay? 15i plus 4i, that's just 19i, okay? But then we got negative 6 minus 10i squared. i squared, didn't we decide a little while ago i squared was negative 1? So this is minus 10 times negative 1. Well, that's just minus negative 10, and minus negative 10 is the same thing as plus 10. So what I have is negative 6 plus 19i plus 10, and negative 6 plus 10 is 4, so what that gives me is 4 plus 19 times i. Okay? Again, fairly straightforward. Uh, it's just like multiplying binomials, only instead of uh, only uh, uh, combining these two terms, you actually combine these two terms as well, because this i squared turns out to be a real number. Okay? And again, please notice that your answer is always written in the form of real part plus imaginary part. Okay? Well, now let's try... Uh, <clears throat> dividing. Let's divide uh, C over B. Is that what I want to do? Uh, yes, that is what I want to do. Okay. C over B. So that means I have 11 minus 13i divided by 2 minus 5i. Okay? Now, Remember when we were uh, when we were rationalizing the denominator earlier in the course, okay? And uh, what we would do is we would take our denominator. Let's say we had like three plus the square root of two. We would multiply that times three minus the square root of two over three minus the square root of two. We do the exact same thing here, okay? We're going to multiply this times. Uh, oops, sorry. We multiply it times two plus five i over two plus. 5i, okay? This is called the complex conjugate to this, okay? The real part is identical. The imaginary part, you just change the sign, okay? If this one's minus, you turn it to plus. If it's plus, you turn it to minus. It's that easy. Now, why? Why would we do such a thing? Well, it actually, it's because uh, it's going to make this, uh, this denominator real. Because Notice we have a minus b times a plus b. That's a difference of squares. That means my denominator is going to be 2 squared minus 5i squared. 
okay? 2 squared, that's just 4. And 5i squared, well, 5 squared is uh, 25, and i squared is negative 1, so that's negative 25. And I end up with 4 minus negative 25, which is 4 plus 25, which is 29. So my denominator is just going to be 29. Now let's figure out what the numerator is. Uh, again, we'll FOIL. <clears throat> 11 times 2, 22. 11 times 5i, 55i. 11, uh, sorry, negative 13i times 2 is minus 26i. And negative 13i plus 5i squared, plus 5, uh, let me try that again. Negative 13i times 5i is negative 65i squared, okay? So what does that give us? Well, 55i minus 26i, I believe that is 29i. So this is going to be over 29. Uh, so this is going to be something plus 29i. And then I have 22 there. And minus 65i squared, remember what we did last time? That i squared is actually negative 1, so it's minus negative 65, so that means plus 65. And that's going to get us, uh, let me clear some space here, that's going to get us 22 plus 65 is 87 plus 29i over 29, which magically simplifies down to 3 plus i. 87 over 29 is 3. 29i over 29 is i. And sure enough, that's what we get. And if you multiply 2 minus 5i times 3 plus i, sure enough, you'll see that you get 11 minus 13i. Okay? So now we figured out how to, how to add, how to subtract, how to multiply, how to divide. Uh, let's answer a couple more questions. The first question is complex numbers. What are they? Where are they? How big are they? What, where is it on the number line? Interesting question. Strange answer. Let me tell you what it is. First, let's get a number line. 0, 2, 4, negative 2, negative 4. Okay? So there's our number line. And let's say we want to find the uh, complex number... 4 plus 2i, okay? Well, first let's do the real part. Start from 0, go 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 2i. This is where it gets weird. Plus 2i. It's right there. It's not actually on the number line. It's off the number line. What you end up having is a number plane, okay? where this is our real axis, and this is our imaginary axis, okay? So the number i is right there. The number 1 is there, the number i is there, the number negative 1 is there, and the number negative i is right there. Huh. So 4 plus 2i ends up being right there. Uh, 1 minus i would be right there, okay? So the real part is your horizontal it's like your x-axis. And the imaginary part is like your y-axis. Okay? Now, let's see. We said that this point was the point 4 plus 2i, right? So now my next question is, and my last question, is what's the absolute value of a complex number? Well, it's actually very related to plotting it on the, on the complex number plane. Because if you remember, with real numbers, we always said the absolute value was just the distance from zero on the number line. Same thing. It's still true. It's just that it's the distance from zero on the number plane. So now instead of just going left and right like this, we have to go out diagonally like that. And remembering our old buddy Pythagoras, now we just have to find the hypotenuse of a triangle with this side being 4 and this side being 2. It's easy. 4 squared is 16. 2 squared is 4. Uh, so that means uh, 16 plus 4 is 20. So that means this squared will be 20. So that's just the square root of 20, which happens to be 2 times the square root of 5. 
Okay? So then I would write the absolute value of 4 plus 2i is 2 times the square root of 5. Cool, huh? What's the absolute value of 1 minus i? Well, now we have a triangle that is 1, 1, and square root of 2. Okay? So the absolute value of 1 minus i is square root of 2. And that's all there is to it. Okay? Now, why do we care about these? Why do we care about these complex numbers? The reason that this is coming up is because complex numbers, uh, we've, we've had uh, quadratic equations where we try to solve it and we said, oh, we're taking the square root of a negative number. There is no solution. Well, there's no real solution, but there actually is a complex solution. And the reason I'm bringing these up is because, well, now we have an answer for any quadratic equation at all because now we have these complex solutions. Okay? So we'll, uh, we'll get into that uh, in another video. Till then, adios.